Hello friends, welcome to another session of Oral Medicine and Radiology series. Today we will deal with Silography. These are my contents. By definition, Silography can be defined as the radiographic demonstration of the major salivary glands by introducing a radiopaque contrast medium into their ductal system. I am not going into too much detail. Uh, regarding the history part, just want to show you that uh, as early as in 1902, there has been mentions of silography in the pages of history. Coming to the various indications, presence of calculi or any other blockages within the duct, uh, it can also be used to exactly locate the position of the calculi. Uh, to check the extent of ductal and glandular destruction secondary to an obstruction. To determine the extent of glandular breakdown, to assess or uh, assess the function in cases of dry mouth or serostomia conditions. To determine the location, size, nature and origin of a swelling or mass of the salivary gland. Obstructive disorders such as stone structures and mucus impactions. Gradual or progressive enlargements to locate those or to identify those. Uh, this could include chronic infection, cyanosis, benign lymphoepithelial lesion, that is your Mikulis disease and sarcoidosis. Post operative uh, or post traumatic salivary fistula okay, to detect this. And surgical considerations like uh, amount of damage to the gland at its uh, salvageability during or after surgery uh, to choose the perfect site for biopsy to differentiate uh, intrinsic as well as uh, extrinsic tumor that is to identify between uh, or to differentiate between intrinsic or extrinsic tumors to identify the relation of uh, the tumor to the facial nerve so that it can be saved uh, recurrent silenitis pain of unknown course Sorry, cause, especially in that particular area, uh, xerostomia, therapeutic conditions, sorry, therapeutic reasons, that is dilation of the duct or uh, iodinated contrast to sterilize the ductal system. Okay, so these are the various indications for uh, silography. Let's go to the contraindications. Contraindications uh, strict no no, that is uh, allergy to compounds containing iodine. Okay. So, patient might undergo uh, severe allergic reaction or even phylaxis, so that should be checked first. Periods of uh, acute infection or inflammation, so why? Because uh, it could be really painful and the second is uh, it could actually introduce the infection deeper inside. That is, there could be chance for retrograde infection. It could uh, spread the infection deeper. And then uh, calculus close to the ductal opening. So, if you actually uh, find out that the calculus is a little more uh, proximal, okay, it is a little more near to the orifice, you can actually milk it and remove it out instead of using silography technique, uh, which could actually push the calculus deeper inside. Then, if you anticipate any thyroid function test in your patient, you should ask the patient whether he is going to be undergoing any uh, thyroid function test because it could mess up with the results because uh, contrast agents could find some of the contrast agents contain iodine. Coming to the various disadvantages, uh, uh, most of the silography techniques uh, which uh, are done, especially those with two dimensional uh, use uh, irradiation dose, then your CT if at all it is used, uh, uses uh, irradiation dose. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, there, there are uh, methods which don't use um, radiation also, and I'll tell you. Uh, high skill is needed to conduct the procedure, so you need to have a trained uh, technician or you need to be very skilled or trained in order to conduct this procedure. It is a painful procedure or it could induce a lot of discomfort in your patient. There is probability of perforation if you don't do the procedure properly. There is a chance for you to push the stone further inside the ductal system. 
Okay, these are those with the disadvantages. Coming to the arborentarian, uh, you can use uh, another instruments also, but uh, the standard instruments for to use are uh, uh, listed here. Uh, Rabinow silographic repeaters, lacrimal probes, contrast agent, uh, contrast media, um, dental cotton rolls, and ambient lighting. Coming to the contrast media, the ideal requisites of that, it should have physiological properties similar to that of saliva. It should be miscible with saliva. It shouldn't be like kerosene over water. It should be miscible. Uh, absence of systemic or local toxicity. Low surface tension and low viscosity. Easy elimination. It should be easily eliminated from your system. Uh, absorption and detoxification should be as normal as possible. Okay, so these are the ideal requisites of a contrast media. Coming to the various types of contrast media, it can be uh, classified as ionic aqueous solutions and non ionic aqueous solutions or oil based and water based. We uh, have two types. Okay, ionic uh, could include urographin, cyanographin, and cyoxyl, uh, and uh, non ionic are omnipic. Or, uh, you could actually divide it into oil based and water based. Oil based are uh, ethidiol, lipidiol, etc., and water based are uh, pantopic. Okay, so there is a difference between oil based and water based. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you what all. Okay, so uh, you know, examining uh, each type of uh, contrast media in detail the advantages as well as the disadvantages. Coming to the advantages of oil based, uh, radio, uh, sorry. Um, contrast agent. It's densely uh, radio opaque, thus it shows very good contrast. It has high viscosity and thus uh, it slows the excretion from the gland. So why this is advantageous is because uh, you have sufficient amount of time so that uh, you can click multiple radiographs. So that is why you actually do the cyanobacteria procedure in order to take proper radiographs. So you have sufficient time because it's sufficiently viscous. The flip side is that extra visited contrast may remain in the soft tissues for, for many months and may produce a foreign body reaction. And uh, high viscosity means uh, you need to apply considerable amount of pressure and this could actually cause a lot of discomfort to the patient. And then uh, if there is any calculi, this excessive pressure could actually force it into the down into the deeper parts of the ducts. Coming to the aqueous uh, Radio opaque, uh, sorry, contrast media. Uh, it is having low viscosity, thus it can be easily introduced. You needn't apply a lot of pressure. Easily and rapidly, uh, it gets removed from the gland. So, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about the excretion part or uh, uh, the problem that it, it could stay there for a long, long time and cause any soft, uh, soft tissue or foreign body reaction because it's easily eliminated. Uh, it's easily absorbed and excreted uh, with extra second. Okay, so uh, this is these were the advantages. But uh, coming to the downside, uh, since uh, it is very really easily removed as well as it is uh, easily injected, it's less radio opaque and uh, it's a little bit difficult to see the touch clearly when compared to the oil based ones. And uh, elimination or excretion from the gland is very rapid unless it is a closed system. So the problem here is that uh, you need to be very careful with your radiographs. You need to be very quick and all the uh, setups should be as quick as possible. Otherwise, uh, you, couldn't, you, you wouldn't be able to get a proper uh, radiograph showing the pathology. Coming to the procedure, it can be divided into three phases, preoperative phase, the filling phase and the emptying phase. All three phases are important. The preoperative phase is when you, uh, you know, the uh, step before the injection. The filling, uh, the filling phase is the phase where you inject and take the dessert, and the filling phase is when you eliminate or remove the uh, contrast medium. There also you need to take radiographs. So actually, uh, uh, speaking, you need to take radiographs in all the three phases. Uh, the radiographs which we take in the preoperative phase is called as scout radiographs and they are taken so that uh, 
we can actually note the position or presence of any radio peak obstruction uh, okay or uh, to assess the position of con uh, of shadows cast by normal anatomic structures that may overlie the blank such as thyroid bone or any other uh, part of the bone uh, to assess the exposure factor so all these things are uh, reasons why you take a scout radiograph so even if we notice any of these you can actually reposition the patient or uh, you know uh, tilt the head a little bit like this or like that or uh, you may actually uh, decide whether to take a radiograph or or, or inject a radiopic dye or not so suppose uh, you, you see a calculator very close to the oral pain so you may consider reconsider uh, you know whether you should actually inject the dye or not or you can actually milk the calculate out instead of injecting uh, radiopic contrast because it stands a chance of you know uh, introducing the calculi deeper inside the ducts okay and then uh, you, you can also assess the exposure factor so if suppose uh, the exposure factors are not proper then you can alter the progress okay uh, okay this is both for uh, 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 pre-operative well, during the filling phase as well as the ejection phase you can use all these uh, radiographic projections for the parotid as well as the submandibular black for parotid you can use panoramic black oblique rotated uh, posterior anterior or anterior posterior view and intraoral view of the cheek and for submandibular you can use panoramic black oblique true occlusal true lateral skull with tongue depressed so that there is no interference or soft tissue shadows okay coming to the filling phase uh, uh, this is the phase where we actually introduce the uh, contrast media into the ductile system. So here what you do is uh, you or if uh, sorry the ductile orifice is located. After the orifice has been identified the duct can be explored with the lacrimal probe. The cheek must be turned outward before the probe is inserted into the duct because the tors because of the torsion nature of the stencil duct. So uh, this is the phase where we actually uh, locate the orifice, explore it and then uh, introduce the cannula so that um, your contrast can be injected and here after injection you take the required radiographs okay so while exploring the bottom duct the probe should pass through the length of the floor of the mouth to the level of the myelo head muscle so that is the requisite for the bottom duct or the submandibular duct uh, the duct orifice is cannulated. The cannula can be held in place by taping the tubing to the face or having the patient to bite on the tubing wrapped in a sponge. This is to stabilize the cannula or uh, to avoid discomfort to the uh, patient. Uh, the contrast medium is introduced and radiographs are taken by two views in right angles. So, uh, why right angles? Because for the localization purposes, especially if you find a cannula, you can actually localize it. Okay, uh, uh, these pictures uh, actually show the identification of the orifice, uh, exploring the orifice using a lacrimal probe and then cannulating using a cannula. So, uh, this what you see is the parotid gland uh, orifice and its uh, cannulation and here you see a submandibular palliable gland uh, ductal uh, identification, cannulation and sorry, exploring. Uh, coming to the last and the final uh, phase that is called as the emptying phase. So here the cannula is removed, the patient is allowed to rinse the mouth and then lemon juice is given so that so the patient salivates and so that uh, the contrast medium is eliminated as rapidly as possible. Uh, so here uh, you actually take two different radiographs at two different times that is uh, you know, after one minute and after five minutes. And this is a standard rotation. To take two radiographs at one and five minute intervals. This is to check whether the media uh, contrast media has been completely eliminated. Okay. Coming to the various techniques, there are uh, three different techniques for uh, um, silography. The first one is a simple injection method, just like uh, similar, not just like, but very similar to how we inject an LA. So you use your hand to inject in the and you give the pressure to the hub or to the syringe. Okay, so this is how you uh, do this procedure. An oil based or macros contrast medium is introduced into uh, the ductal orifice using 
gentle hand pressure until the patient experiences tightness or discomfort. So um, you, you inject and ask the patient to give a response. So when you inject, the patient will respond. The patient will tell, Doc, uh, it's, it's getting filled. And it's, it's, it's filled uh, enough. You know, patient will give all these prompts and, and accordingly. So you have to rely on the patient's responses. So we might think we can inject a lot, but it's actually only 0.7 ml for the parotid gland and 0.5 ml for the submandibular gland that you inject. So very small amount. So you need to be very careful because right? you can overfill the uh, duct and cause damage. Coming to the advantages, it's very simple and it's very inexpensive. Disadvantages, as I happened to mention some time back, the arbitrary pressure which is applied may cause damage to the gland. So the pressure which I apply might not be the same as you or might not be the same as another third person. So there is a lot of variation in the operator's uh, pressure applied, application uh, and uh, you have to rely on the patient's response so uh, you you can go in for uh, underfilling or overfilling so if it, if the patient is a very dramatic patient uh, you might uh, not properly fill the gland so it could be underfilling and sometimes the patient may not respond properly so you might tend to overfill the gland also so these are the disadvantages Coming to the next technique, it's called the hydro hydrostatic technique. So here, what we do is we actually um, hang the contrast media and the candidate. And the patient is asked to lie down. So it just trips down. Uh, we don't have to apply the pressure; it just trickles and fills the duct. So across contrast media is allowed to flow freely into the gland until the force of gravity, uh, sorry, under the force of gravity, until the patient experiences discomfort. So here, uh, the operator is not the person who is applying the pressure. It is the gravitational force that fills the uh, duct. Okay, the advantage is that the control introduction of the contrast medium is less likely to cause damage to the duct. And it's uh, simple and considerably uh, inexpensive. Disadvantage is that uh, it's again uh, reliant on the patient's response because again, we have to see uh, for the patient's uh, actions so that you, you, you can stop the uh, filling or you can stop the cannula and uh, another big problem is that the patient has to lie down during the procedure so you need to uh, adjust the radiographic equipment in such a way that it is compatible with lying down procedure okay and uh, third method is called as the continuous infusion uh, pressure monitored method so here uh, you don't have to rely on gravity or you don't have to rely on operator or uh, even uh, the patient's response for that matter. You just need to uh, leave everything to this particular equipment or instrument. Uh, so using aqueous contrast medium, a constant flow rate is adopted and the ductal pressure is monitored throughout the procedure. So this uh, mesh, uh, this computer or this instrument, it uh, calculates the amount of uh, liquid uh, of uh, contrast which has to be given and the pressure at which it has to be injected. So it's all controlled. Coming to the advantages, uh, this controlled mechanism uh, is very less likely to cause uh, damage to the uh, duct and the gland. And it does not cause overfilling or underfilling of the gland and it does not rely on the patient's responses. So even if the patient is a very good actor or a very bad actor, you need to worry because uh, the computer will handle it okay and then uh, coming to the disadvantages uh, this complex equipment is required so you may have to uh, pull in a lot of uh, money for that and then uh, it's time consuming so it will take a lot of time it will test both your patient as well as that of the patient coming to the various interpretations uh, uh, there are some normal appearances and uh, pathological appearances. Let's go to uh, each appearance. So the first appearance, uh, the normal appearance is the parotid gland. Uh, so this particular appearance is called as a tree in winter appearance. Okay, I'll just show you the picture. See, this appearance is called as tree in winter appearance. So you can see why it is called as a tree in winter appearance because it resembles a tree in winter. That is. It's devoid of any leaves. It's just the branches 
that is seen here okay so it appears as a leafless uh, tree up here huh? simply a tree in where winter appears okay so uh, this is the parotid gland so you can just expect what the submandibular gland will look like in normal up here yes yes it's called as bush in winter appearance so why is it called a bush in winter appearance it's because it's not very huge as that of a parotid gland it is somewhat smaller than that of a parotid gland so it is called as a bush in winter appearance okay so those were the normal salivary gland appearances so let's go to the pathological changes so you can see pathological changes uh, in uh, conditions where you have calculi sylodopitis which is uh, inflammation of the ductal epithelium or ducts and uh, then you can see granular changes associated with sylodenitis um, Chogrin syndrome or uh, it's actually called as Sjogren syndrome but you know we are more accustomed to using this term Jogren syndrome so for time being let's go with that okay Jogren syndrome and then intrinsic tumors uh, yeah so this appearance is the appearance of a calculi okay this is called as a filling defect okay so you might wonder why you need a silographic procedure to detect the calculi you can simply take a radiograph yes you are partially right so if you have a radiopaque uh, calculi then you can just go in for a, a normal uh, radiograph but what if you have a radiolucent radiolucent calculi well there are chances like uh, you know if there is a lucite uh, silolith which is lodged inside the duct and then you can have it as a radiolucent uh, stone so you might not be able to appreciate it in the normal radiograph so you need to um, put in a radiographic contrast and take the silograph uh, sorry do that silography procedure so this is how you uh, see it it's called as a filling defect so here you can see ductal dilation proximal to the calculus and uh, yeah this is the proximal part or the part which is somewhat nearer to the orifice and this is the distal part okay and uh, during the emptying phase you can see that little bit of uh, contrast can remain here okay so that's how you see a calculate and uh, coming to sylodopitis uh, yeah segmented circulation or dilation of the structure of the main that is called a sausage link appearance it's associated with ductal stenosis or calculi here that is inflammation of the duct okay so you can see that there is look circulation of the duct so it appears like a sausage okay or a sausage link or chain of sausage okay and this is this is not a normal edifice this is actually an mri okay Silographic appearance of sylodenitis. Okay, so here you see dots or blobs of contrast medium within that gland, an appearance known as sylectasis. Okay, caused by the inflammation of the glandular tissue, producing the sacular dilation of the acinet. So earlier you saw that the duct was actually um, inflamed. So here you see that acinet is inflamed. Okay, for the ends of the, or the terminal ends of the uh, duct is actually uh, inflamed. So when the terminal end is inflamed, we can see that the contrast medium is actually pulled or uh, you know collected over this particular area. So here you see the lining epithelium. This is the proximal aspect of the duct. And this is the terminal or the distal aspect of the duct or the end part of the duct. So you can see that this part is actually narrow, whereas this end is actually more broad. So this extra thing you see here will appear as a blob here. Okay. 
this radio peak blob is actually this extra collection of fluid or extra collection of um, contrast agent here whereas this part is seen as a duct here okay so the next condition is almost uh, similar to this but there is a slight difference okay okay this is the blob what you see okay the next appearance is that of jogren syndrome or sjogren syndrome so here uh, you see an appearance which is called as a punctate silectasis the earlier appearance was called as silectasis this is punctate silectasis or snowstorm appearance so it will resemble uh, the condition of a snowstorm okay so uh, by this terminology you can see uh, you can you can uh, you know imagine that there will be a lot of blobs seen okay yeah so here uh, you can see in this picture you can see that there is weakening of the lining epithelium and the radiographic contrast material actually escapes so it doesn't actually get collected here instead it actually escapes so in the earlier condition you could see that this part was the part which retained the contrast media and that part was very obvious but here you see that you know a lot of small small blobs are seen instead of a single big blob okay so that gives the appearance of small small plenty of blobs in the particular radiogram so this appearance is called as a punctate selectasis or a snowstorm appearance okay so the early one the blobs were larger and fewer in number whereas here you see multiple minute blobs okay so this is punctate silectasis or snowstorm and the other other one was silectasis okay, okay. Uh, this is the last appearance it's called as the in um, ball in hand appearances sorry appearance this is usually seen in uh, intrinsic tumor so in intrinsic tumors uh, you don't actually uh, visualize the tumor using a cellography technique but as the tumor expands it actually pushes the ducts away from each other so that uh, you can actually see each uh, duct separated or pushed out it, it actually resembles the extended or you know the fingers wrapped around the ball I'll show you yeah so here we can see each finger trying to wrap around the ball okay so here this particular radiograph shows these ducts trying to wrap around a radiolucent or a normal structure see here actually we cannot see the tumor it's because the contrast agent doesn't go inside the tumor it goes only inside the ducts so only the ducts are delineated the tumor isn't but since the tumor is pushing the ducts away from each other you can see the ducts very clearly okay and this appearance is called as the ball in hand appearance fine okay coming to the various advantages in cellography i'm not uh, dealing with this in detail i'll just show you in a quick glance okay. uh, interventional cellography yeah you have something which is called as a dormia basket okay this is uh, this particular instrument it's called as a dormia basket uh, it, it resembles some of your kitchen instruments but uh, you know this works somewhat like an umbrella okay, the mechanism is somewhat like an umbrella that is you can actually open and close it when open it looks like this Whereas when you close it, it is just a single strand of uh, metal or a string. Okay. So why why you need this? I'll just show you. Okay. So it is like this. Okay. Uh, so these pictures actually show a calculus lodged inside the duct, and uh, this is how you introduce the 
stratigraphic contrast material so you observe this carefully and then what you do is you introduce the dormia basket in a closed condition so it goes like that it sorry so it uh, goes like that in and it bypasses the calculi okay sorry again it bypasses the calculi and then goes like this and then at this point once it exceeds the um, limit of uh, the calculus you open it okay so what happens is the three arms it catches or lodges the calculus or calculi or a lip within it and then it's easily retrieved so this can be used in loosely adherent or loosely uh, you know stuck calculi within the duct okay so this is how it appears and then uh, the next is uh, mr cellography so uh, here actually uh, the importance is that um, you don't need any radiation that's just the uh, magnetic resonance that you are using okay there is no uh, it's not an invasive procedure and it's painless because you don't have to inject it inside the um, modification orifice even you can actually intravenously inject the contrast meter so that it get it gets accumulated inside the uh, particular region of interest it can also be applied as a introductory contrast okay so what is in uh, sorry there is uh, there are choices for this particular method okay and another uh, advantage with this method is that uh, you, you can actually locate it three dimensionally or pinpoint or spot on you can find out exactly the position of the calculus rather than uh, take two uh, separate radiographs to locate the uh, calculus on a particular object of interest okay so uh, this is how the resulting image is appear it almost looks similar to your uh, normal radiograph and the cellulitic picture of a normal radiograph so you can see the uh, punctate cellulitis and the open syndrome and cellulitis so various blobs which you see okay in cellulite matrix and this is the normal appearance uh, the tree in winter appearance so it all resembles the normal two dimension radiographic only thing is to use MR. Okay, coming to CT again, uh, you have uh, the added advantage of uh, using three dimensional methods here. You can locate it, you can pinpoint the uh, particular uh, uh, object of interest, and uh, you can always uh, uh, you know, view it in 3D resolution also. That is the most important thing. Here. But again, you are using a lot of, a lot of radiation. Here. You don't, you don't need to take multiple uh, radiographs, but you know, the amount of radiation used is more. Okay. And then there's digital subtraction radiography where uh, two different uh, radiographs taken at two different uh, time intervals can be joined together and unwanted parts can be removed so that you can track for any changes. Okay. That's digital subtraction radiography. Okay, so with that, uh, I would like to wind up this session of silography. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Stay safe and stay lively.